O oh Lord, hear my voice, for I have called to you. Be my help. Do not abandon or forsake me, O oh God, my Savior. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good morning, dear friends in Christ. Today, we thank the good Lord once again for bringing us together, and in a special way, as we continue our first Holy Communion, on behalf of our pastor, Brother William, I want to welcome today to the midst of the communion of saints, Nicholas and Adeline. As you receive the Holy Communion today, we pray for your intentions, and in a particular way, we pray for the intentions of the happy repose of the soul of our former pastor, Father Jean Bijir. Uh, today is the 60th uh, birthday, and we pray for the happy repose of his soul. May his souls and the souls of all the faith to depart it. Through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Dear friends, today Jesus is teaching us how to pray. If we are in love with Jesus, we must talk to him every day. Just like we talk to someone we are in love with every day. If you have a friendship with someone, you want to talk to them every single day, every single time. So how often do we do this to Jesus? For the times we have not had conversation with Jesus enough, for the times we have not prayed enough, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and for peace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, in what I've done and what I've failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my sisters and brothers, to pray for me to the Lord our God. The Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you, Mortal frailty can do nothing. Grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. Like a fire, there appeared the prophet Elijah, whose words were as a flaming furnace. Their staff of bread he shattered. In his zeal, he reduced them to straits. By the Lord's word, he shut up the heavens and three times brought down fire. How awesome are you, Elijah, in your wondrous deeds? Whose glory is equal to yours? You brought a dead man back to life from the netherworld by the will of the Lord. You sent kings down to destruction and easily broke their power into pieces. You brought down nobles from their beds of sickness. You heard threats at Sinai, at Horeb, avenging judgments. You anointed kings who should inflict vengeance and a prophet as your successor. You were taken aloft in a whirlwind of fire in a chariot with fiery horses. You were destined, it is written, in time to come to put an end to wrath before the day of the Lord, to turn back the hearts of the fathers towards their sons and to reestablish the tribes of Jacob. Blessed is he who shall have seen you 
and who falls asleep in your friendship. For we live only in our life, but after death, our name will not be such. O Elijah, enveloped in the whirlwind. Then Elisha, filled with the twofold portion of his spirit, wrought many marvels by his mere word. During his lifetime, he feared no one, nor was any man able to intimidate his will. Nothing was beyond his power. Beneath him, flesh was brought back to life. In life, he performed wonders. And after death, marvelous deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A responsorial is rejoice in the Lord, you just. Rejoice, rejoice in, in the, the Lord, Lord, you just. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many isles be glad. Cloud and darkness are round about him. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. Rejoice, Rejoice in, in the Lord, Lord you just. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes round about. His lightnings illumine the world and the earth sees and trembles. Rejoice, Rejoice in the, the Lord, Lord you just. just. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice, and all peoples see his glory. Rejoice, Rejoice in, in the Lord, Lord you just. Us. All who worship graven things are put to shame, who glory in the things of naught. All gods are prostrate before him. Rejoice, Rejoice in, in the Lord, Lord you just. Alleluia, alleluia. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You have received a spirit of adoption as fathers through which we cry, Abba, Father. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, In praying, do not babble like the pagans, who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This is how you are to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. If you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I saw Nadaline smiling when I was reading. It's like, what's Father saying? And Nicholas was like, is Father praying our Father? Yes, that is the prayer we must say every day. We have to say that prayer every day because, you know, Jesus is our Father. He loves us so much. So Jesus wants us to pray and talk to him every day, the same way you talk to dad and mom, the same way you talk to your friends, the same way God wants us to talk to him because prayer is life. Every day we pray. As you, are, as you have come to Mass, those of you watching the Mass at home, you are praying right now because prayer is life. Prayer is life. We must pray every day. You know, Jesus teaches us that prayer. 
today in a beautiful way. That prayer is not just so many words. You can say very little words and you've prayed very well. Because it is an act of communion between two people who are in love with each other. That's what prayer is. Prayer is an act of communion. It's an act of conversation. It's just like, oh, dad, I love you. Mom, I love you. The same way you talk to them every day, the same way we must talk to Jesus, talk to God every day. So today... Jesus teaches us that it is not the number of words. It is not how long you spend, how much time you spend at prayers. Even you spend so very short time, but you pray from your heart. God listens to you. Because it is not the number of words that we use that moves God, but the love that God already has for us. Because God loves us. Jesus loves us so much. So every single word we utter at prayer carries so much weight. Because what is prayer? The catechism of the Kali Church teaches us that prayer is the lifting up our heart and our mind to God. We raise our mind to God. So prayer, indeed, must be engaged with every day. We must engage in prayer every day. So ask yourself today, as you receive the First Holy Communion, Nadaline and Nicholas, do you pray every day? The first question is, do you talk to mom and dad every day? Yes. Then the next one is, you must pray every day. Because you must talk to God every day. And for all of us as Christians, wherever we might be watching from, Jesus showed us that prayer requires a structure. You know, just like when you want to give a talk, you have to plan. Oh, I need to talk. These are the things I will do today. This is the way I want to speak with the, with the county counselor, with the, can, with the governor. The same way... Jesus teaches us that prayer has structure. It has a plan. Because when we go to prayer without, you know, a map out plan, we kind of like going on a journey without a destination. So what is that? How do we pray? The first one is that prayer has a structure. The second one is that Jesus teaches us that prayer requires adoration. We must adore God every time. And that is why sometimes when we pray, we kind of kneel down, we have some posture. We don't stand like this and say, I want to pray. No, you don't do that. You must maintain some decorum, some posture, adoration. You must adore the Lord. The second one, the third one is that Jesus teaches us to give thanks and submitting to the superior will of God. You know, in prayers, prayer can change God's decision, but it's changes us first. Prayer will change God's decision, but what it does is that it changes us first. So we must be ready to accept God's will when we pray. The fourth one is that Jesus teaches us to pray for our daily bread, showing us that past and future are not ours to worry about. Just pray for daily bread. Jesus, I'm here today. Provide for my needs. All we should be concerned with is today. It's today, just today. Because Jesus owns tomorrow. God owns tomorrow. And finally, Jesus teaches us that even when we pray, our life is part of prayer. Our life is part of prayer. So after praying, in words, we must follow our prayers with action. What is that action? Forgiveness. You must learn to forgive. I must learn to forgive. As a matter of fact, forgiveness is the act of love. You know, as I said in the beginning, prayer is like having a conversation with someone you love. Therefore, if you want to have effect, if you want to experience effectiveness in prayer, you must learn to forgive. And that is hard because forgiveness is the heart of love. It is the act of love. So we pray today that as God used Elisha, a prophet, through the power of his words, so also God will use us when we learn to forgive, when we learn to talk to him every day, that our lives will give glory to God. Amen. So pray every day. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key. Jesus started with prayers and ended with prayers. Prayer is the master key. Prayer is the master key. Let us pray.
Let us pray for the leaders of the church, Apo Francis, Archbishop Michael, all the priests, deacons, and religious, that we may continually have the intercession of the Holy Spirit in, when we pray. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for all those who are weak in prayers, for all of us, that we may be strengthened by the Holy Spirit in praying every day. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for all those who are afflicted with this pandemic. We pray for all the earth workers. We pray for the scientific personnel who work for solutions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We remember this mass today for the intentions of Nicholas and Nadaline as they received the whole first Holy Communion, that they will continue to grow in wisdom, knowledge, and power of prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear prayers. We pray offer this Mass for the intentions of the happy repose of the soul of our former pastor, Father Jim McGill, as today will have been his 60th birthday, that God will grant eternal rest to his soul and continue to bless the work of his hands that he left behind. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Please pray for your intentions. God, our Heavenly Father, we have come to you. May we continually be in love with you as we pray every day, and may we live our life in accordance with your way, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, for creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and we call from your hands to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, for creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and we call from your hands to become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With a humble spirit and a contrite heart, may we Pray, dear friends, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, your mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who in the offerings provide for the twofold names of human nature, nourishing us with food and renew us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is to a right and just, a duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and eternal God. For by his birth, For, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving itself is your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of our holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them, let it do for, so that they may become for us the body 
and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave him thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for her, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Savior, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give me thanks, you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring out to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants and priests, Father G. McG, whom you have cut from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a dead like ease may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our sisters and brothers, who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, we bless Joseph as spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, John Vihani, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be coerced to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him, my honey, honey. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the whole Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your way. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Please offer each other the sign of peace. So Christ be with you. So Christ be with you. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamp of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus. 
the old, the Lamb of God, the old in will take away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. The body of Christ, amen. The body of Christ, say amen. Say it in your mouth, congratulations. Let us pray. As this reception of your holy communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, on behalf of our pastor, Father William Rosario, congratulations to Nicholas and Nadalin Varela. Congratulations. And to your parents, Hambato and Susanna, right? Yeah, congratulations. Thank you for bringing them up in the faith. Thank you. And to all your teachers, thank you so much. To their teachers, thank you very much. So once again, uh, Nadaline and uh, Nicholas, make sure you pray every day, okay? Make sure you tell mommy and dad, let us pray every day. And today we pray for the happy repose of the soul of our former pastor, Father Jim McGee. Uh, today will have been his 66th birthday. So we pray for his happy repose of the soul. We call it pray for all the good works he has done, that God will continue to bless and keep all safe. Amen. So thank you very much for coming. Congratulations. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may mighty God bless and keep you all the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth to love and serve the Lord. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Thanks for watching and thanks for coming.